Hello and welcome back. We're going to continue with a series of Windows Forensics videos that I've been creating and cover another important artifact called the System Resource Utilization Monitor, SRUM, or SRUM for short. I've got a web page pulled up here on the SANS ISC InfoSec forums aptly titled System Resource Utilization Monitor. This page provides a good overview of the artifact, and most of this we'll actually cover within the video, but I would still recommend you check this page out. I'll include a link to it in the video's description. The interesting thing to me about SRUM is that many of the forensics books I've read and online material I've consulted don't even mention the existence of this artifact. It's fairly new in that it was introduced in Windows 8, and as the name would imply, it was designed to track system resource utilization, things like CPU cycles, network activity, and even power consumption. Just like other Windows artifacts we've looked at in previous videos, the intent of the feature has nothing to do with forensics. Some of the data collected by SRUM is actually available to the end user on a Windows 8 or later system by going to Task Manager and looking at the App History section. But behind the scenes, the associated database used by SRUM contains a lot of other forensic artifacts that we can parse and paint a picture of a user's activity, even correlating that activity with network-related events, data transfer, processes, and all sorts of other interesting things. The SRUM database is located in percent system root percent, which of course is typically C colon backslash windows, underneath system32, underneath SRU, and within a file called srudb.dat. The database is in the extensible storage engine ESE format, which is also called JetBlue. You'll probably recognize that format because it's the same format used by Microsoft Exchange, Active Directory, Windows Search, and numerous other products. There are several tools available to us to open the database and parse the contents. Some are paid, such as NCASE, Actually, the InScript itself that parses this artifact is free, but in case, of course, is a commercial product. And some of the tools are free. One of the most useful, in my opinion, is SRUM Dump, which happens to fall into the latter category. It's free, and it was written by a gentleman named Mark Baggett, who happens to be the person who wrote this particular article. Mark is the lead course author for SANS Python for Penetration Testers, which is SEC 573, so it should come as no surprise that this utility was written in Perl. No, just kidding, it was written in Python, thankfully. He's actually provided not only the Python script, but a compiled standalone executable version that you can drop on a Windows box without having Python pre-installed. It's super easy to use, and it will create as output an Excel spreadsheet containing the forensics artifacts within the SRUM database. To use it, you simply call SRUM dump, you specify the ESC database itself, the SRUM database, an Excel out file, an Excel template that tells it which data you're interested in parsing and how to format that data. He does include two here that you can use. And optionally, you can specify a registry hive, specifically the software registry hive, to allow SRUM dump to parse network profile information and actually provide names of SSIDs within the output of the spreadsheet, which is extremely useful. In the next section of the video, we're going to switch over to a Windows 10 VM, and the first thing we'll do is actually grab this database off of a live system. Now, just like the registry and certain other Windows files, it's locked by the operating system, so we can't copy this using the command line or Windows Explorer. We'll actually try and see what happens. We're going to look at two alternative methods to grab this from a live system. There are many other ways to do it as well. And then once we get the database, we're going to run the SRUM dump tool and take a quick look at the Excel spreadsheet and how much data is contained therein. So let's move over to the Windows VM and get started. Okay, so here we are in our Windows 10 VM. The first thing I want to show you is Task Manager and then the App History tab. I mentioned this earlier and this data is actually provided by SRUM and it's very easy as you can see for the end user to gather some resource usage information. In my case, this is from 7-12-2017, or since 7-12-2017 for the current user account. And you can see that we have names of applications and CPU time and network related information. Most of this is all zeros because this VM isn't very heavily used, but on a normal system, we would have some decent data that we could work with here. But we know, of course, that behind the scenes, there's a wealth of information contained within the SRUM database that we can forensicate 
and gather a lot of additional information that will help us in our investigations. But still, I wanted to show you what the end user is able to use the SRUM feature for, and clearly there's some decent data here. Next, let's try to grab the file, the database that we're after, off the live file system. Now, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do this much the same as we can't copy registry hives live off the file system without using some other method. But let's go ahead and see what happens if we try. That's the whole purpose of a lab after all. So here's the directory. As you can see, Windows System32 SRU. And here's the file we're after. So let's go ahead and copy this and try to stick it on the desktop. And you'll see we've gotten a file in use error and we're not going to be successful. So we're going to look at two different methods to grab that file. The first is going to be via FTK Imager. Let's go ahead and load up FTK Imager and we'll go to File, Add Evidence Item. For our case, a logical drive will be fine and we'll logically access the C drive and drill down into the root of C and then into the location of that file. So here we are in the root, then under Windows, then we'll scroll down to System32. Now bear with me, this will take a minute or so for FTK Imager to parse the contents of this directory because of course it's fairly big, a lot of files here. I'm doing this live and not editing the video, so what you see is what you get. And underneath System32, let's scroll down to the SRU path. And here's the file we're after, srudb.dat. So let's right click, export files, We'll stick it on the desktop, and as you can see here, one file exported successfully. So there we go. Now, we'll go ahead and stick srudb.dat over here. And next, let's look at the second method, which is via a volume shadow copy. To do this, we're going to need to load up an administrative command prompt. And the first thing we're going to do is look at the existing volume shadow copies on the system. If we do not load up an administrative command prompt and we try to run VSS admin list shadows, we're not going to be able to do it. As you can see here, you don't have correct permissions to run the command. So again, an administrative command prompt. So once we load that up, we're going to repeat the same command of VSS admin list shadows. You can see here we've got two volume shadow copies. There's one, there's two. The newest is today's date, a few hours ago, and the other is from 712. We'll go ahead and grab volume shadow copy one. Let's copy that path to the clipboard under shadow copy volume. So let's grab that entire path. Now let's change to our desktop at the command prompt here. And we're going to use make link, which actually makes a symbolic link, specifically a directory sim link. So we're gonna do mklink slash d, We'll call this SRUM, you can call it anything, it doesn't matter what you call this particular sim link. And then we're going to paste that path, but very importantly, we must put the trailing backslash here. If we do not put the trailing backslash, we're not going to be able to access the data. In fact, let's just screw up and not put it and see what happens. So there's SRUM, it looks like it created it successfully. I'll change into it and there's some sort of error. The parameter is incorrect. So let's go ahead and try again. Looks like we can't even delete it, so we'll have to do rd slash s because it thinks it's a directory sim link. And we'll move that out of the way. And now let's repeat the same command and put a trailing backslash at the end, which again is key to being able to access this. So once we do that, once again it's been created, we'll change into the SRAM directory. And now we're looking at what appears to be the root of C within this volume shadow copy. Now we can drill down into Windows, System32, SRU, and there's the file we're after, srudb.dat. So let's go ahead and copy srudb.dat, and we'll stick it on the desktop. Of course, we need to change the name because we already have an srudb.dat, so we'll call it srudb2.dat, and it's just that simple. Now we've got another copy of the SRUDB database. Of course, this one is older from the volume shadow copy in July, and this one is from the live file system. But again, two different methods that you could use to grab this off of a live system. Next, what we're going to do is actually run SRUM dump against one of these two 
doesn't really matter which. And we'll look at the resulting Excel spreadsheet and go through it just to see how much data we're able to collect. So let's go ahead and move over to the next part of the video. Okay, so now let's actually run the SRUM dump utility and see what kind of output we get. You'll notice on the desktop I've already downloaded it and we've got the executable and the two provided templates. I'm going to go ahead and click on the address bar here and type in CMD to spawn a non-administrative command prompt in this directory. Now it's worth mentioning that we could just double click on SRUMDump.exe and it does actually have an interactive mode so it will prompt us for the values that it requires. We'll go ahead and do it the old fashioned way though. I'm going to run SRUMDump dash dash help to once again review the usage parameters which should match what we saw on the GitHub page in the beginning of the video. But in short we're going to run dash i to specify the in file which is going to be up a directory and we'll use srudb.dat. We could also use srudb2.dat which is the one we grabbed from the volume shadow copy that was slightly older but doesn't really matter. For the out file we'll just write it to this directory and we'll call it outfile.xlsx. For the template, we'll go ahead and use the standard SRUM template that uh, is provided. And then we'll also go ahead and specify the registry hive. I actually have the software registry hive already on the desktop here, so I'll go ahead and specify it. And again, this will enable us to actually resolve SSIDs and network related information. Unfortunately, there will be none on this particular VM because I haven't actually connected to any wireless networks on the VM. In fact, you'll see a message right here saying there doesn't appear to be any wireless interfaces in this registry file. You can ignore that for now. I'm just showing the usage of it. But uh, I'll actually show you a screenshot that's a better example that the author had uh, created to show this. So we'll give this a second and we'll get a couple of uh, tips and information while this is running and now it's already done and here is the resulting out file so let's go ahead and open this first thing you'll notice is that we've got multiple sheets at the bottom we've got network usage application resource usage network connections push notification data and two different energy usage sections so let's go ahead and auto size all of this to fit I also like to enable filtering and I also highly recommend freezing the top row here. It makes it much easier. But if you look through here, you'll see all kinds of things. For example, here's Chrome being executed. Here's the user associated with that. This is the SID, of course, with the end part being the RID. You'll notice the interface. You'll notice the profile here is blank, but if this were an SSID, then it would actually be shown here as well. And you'll notice bytes sent bytes received and the total bytes so very very interesting information by the way if you don't know how to convert the SID uh, to an actual user what you can do is WMIC user account get name comma SID and you'll actually see that Davis R64 corresponds to that SID so if you weren't sure which which user the uh, SID slash RID corresponded to then that's one easy way to get it WMIC user account get name comma SID Again, 500 is always the admin, uh, guest is always 501, and then the user accounts start here at 1001 and go up from there. So if we go back to this, we also have application resource usage. So let's go ahead and size all of this to fit. Again, we can take the top row here and freeze it, and we can enable filtering if we want to, to make it easier to look through the data. But you can see the executables that have been run uh, you can see, here's Chrome again, you can see the user associated with it, the CPU time in the foreground, so you can actually determine application usage, uh, some of which was displayed in the app history that we looked at in Task Manager. Uh, just all kinds of information. We're obviously not going to cover every bit of this, but I would strongly encourage you to uh, Google some additional uh, resources for this particular uh, artifact. There are tons and tons of pieces of data here that can be very very useful in an investigation this video is just meant to introduce you to the artifact and provide a high level overview so I would highly encourage you to do some more research uh, here we've got network connections again more information I haven't connected to any wireless networks here but uh, you'll notice all kinds of connection related information here for network uh, push notification data energy usage which will be blank on the VM here
but tons of different things here. So that's a brief overview of SRUM Dump. I do want to show you the same web page that we looked at previously. There is actually a uh, an image here that I've blown up. And this is a better example than running it from my boring VM. But you can see here that the spreadsheet was indicating nc.exe was run by this particular SID slash RID. And this particular SSID was connected to when it was run. And you can actually see the bytes sent, received, and the total bytes. So this is obviously Netcat. This will be very, very interesting if we were investigating a particular computer. And you can see that Netcat was used to transfer this number of bytes of data and that it was connected to this particular SSID at the time. And we, of course, can look up the SID to determine which user that corresponded to. So this is uh, kind of a, a more applicable example that you might see in an investigation. So very, very interesting stuff. Again, this is one of several utilities you can use to parse this artifact that happens to be my favorite. Uh, in the next and final section of the video, I'm going to wrap it up by giving you a couple of additional pieces of information about this artifact, and that will be the end of it. So let's go ahead and move into the final section of the video next. Okay, one last thing before we wrap up this video. I wanted to show you this presentation on SRUM Forensics from Champlain College. It's actually hosted on SANS.org under the Summit Archives and I'll include a link to it in the video description as well. One interesting thing is that there's a slide here talking about registry forensics and SRUM. One important thing to realize is that the ESC database, the SRUM database we were looking at, is not constantly written to by the operating system. Rather, it's written to once per hour or on system shutdown. Instead, the data is temporarily stored in the Windows registry in the software hive. It's actually under HKLM Software Microsoft Windows NT current version, which by the way, that path you should recognize because there are several artifacts there that are of uh, very high importance forensically, including network list. But underneath current version, SRUM extensions. So it's important to realize again that the data is temporarily stored there and then moved from there to the ESE database on disk once per hour or on system shutdown. The timestamps in the registry are in UTC as we would expect, and they're stored in 64-bit file time or OLE format. Now, to remind you, you can use the decode utility that we've used before to convert those times. So that's a handy thing to use. And to show you where it is, I've got Registry Explorer already opened, the software hive is opened, and I've already drilled down into that path, Microsoft, Windows NT, current version, SRUM extensions. You'll see the GUIDs here. There's no data yet because it's already been written to the ESC database on disk within this VM. But this is the location under which you would find the registry keys and values for SRUM. So again, the information you're looking for may not necessarily have been written to the ESC database on disk, depending on which data you are seeking. So that about wraps it up. I hope this video has been informative. I hope you'll consider using this particular artifact in your investigations. If you do additional research and find out interesting things, please do comment and share them. I would also invite you to subscribe. I've got several other forensics videos, including an introduction to memory forensics, an introduction to Windows forensics. I also have an application compatibility forensics video that talks about amcache.hve and recentfilecache.bcf, so if you're not familiar with that, check that out. And I hope all of these videos are informative for you. Again, please do like and subscribe and share and all that good stuff. I'd like to thank you for your time and thanks for watching.